from the Chocolate Mountains to the Sea of Cortez. All along the border on a Friday night. This is the Valley Sports Network coming to you live from Burger Stadium here in the city of Hauteville, the carrot capital of the world where the Division Four are getting it on. Division Four Palo Verde Yellow Jackets are ranked number two coming into the house against 13 ranked Hauteville. And what we're gonna see tonight, folks, is a ground and pound double wing offense on both sides of the ball with an outstanding Palo Verde team that has come into their own in the last couple of years. But tonight joining me, Vic Carrillo, is still a little under the weather. We hope to see him next week. We've got none other than Tony Butch Morales from the class of 1994 Calexico High School Hall of Famer, all the quarterback. Butch, welcome to our show. Thank you, thank you, John, for having me again. I'm excited again. Uh, Friday night, this uh, last week was a Thursday, so a different atmosphere. We got homecoming here in Hopeville, California, and I'm expecting a, a good, tough matchup. Uh, you know, a shout out to these linemen who are gonna, you know, to be involved a lot today. So I'm, I'm looking forward to see uh, Marcus Macon and Bejerano, which are excellent running backs, and also uh, Stefan uh, Duarte on the Hopeville side, who leads them in rushing as well. So excited, and I'm looking forward to a, a hard match, uh, a, a good competitive match. That's what I'm looking for. Well, the important thing you mentioned was the linemen, because the linemen are the ones that open the holes for these running backs, make them look stellar, and you can tell that the Palo Verde line has done that for the last several years for Macon. Marcus Macon, a senior, approaching 4,000 career yards. He's only, he needs to get 24 in this game to hit that milestone. And you've got the linemen who are, are, are run blocking. They tire out, but it seems, you know, as the game progresses, that's what they want to do and that's what they like to do. When, when, the, when the coach calls for a pass, I was a lineman, it gives you a chance to just kind of catch your breath, you know, but when you're out there firing off the ball, play after play after play, going for the linebacker or going for the man in front of you, you get tired. But 4,000 career yards is what he's going for tonight. Absolutely, that's incredible. Uh, and that, like I mentioned, that's uh, on the uh, credit to those big linemen that create those uh, crevices or holes to for them to run through him, and uh, I like him. He's he's having an excellent year so far too. Marcus Macon so far has 1,095 yards, averaging averaging about 12.9 uh, yards per carry and a 16 touchdowns. That's that's outstanding. Not only that, uh, not only him, uh, John. We also have Bejerano, Xavier Bejerano, who also has over 1,100 yards for the season with a total of 18 touchdowns. So that's outstanding. It's, it's, it's something that you don't see on a football team that you have two running backs over 1,000 yards in a season. That's incredible. So I'm looking forward to see what they bring tonight. Well, they're bringing, they're, they're, they've got the attitude, here I am, catch me if you can. You know, I'm gonna get the ball, I'm gonna run up right up the middle, down the middle, down your throat. What are you gonna do? So Hopeville needs to step up. They need a key on these two guys. And the scouting report is just that. Bejarano, Macon, and Rio Albañez, who is the, the, the quarterback with ties to Calexico. Rio Albañez has family uh, in Calexico. His grandfather, uh, Albert Albañez, was a Calexico High School graduate, played football in, back in the day. And then he has his cousins, Eddie Albañez and Chuchi Albañez, who were also a big uh, part of the Calexico crowd. Eddie is, uh, Eddie Albañez was uh, running back from 19, in the 1981 season running the option under Al Gutierrez back in the day. So we've got some Calexico ties with the Guilins and with with the, uh, with, with, a, with um, Albanias and, and, and of course, Dagnino. So it's gonna be a, a good game of sorts. If you like the, the running game, you're in for a special treat tonight because both of these teams are gonna be running at you. Now on the, on the Hopeville side, you've got Bryce Buscaglia, the quarterback, a couple of weeks ago, we got to see him at the Calexico Hopeville game. He's a junior, right? He's a yes, junior. Number three. He's, number three. He's coming yes. up. He's coming back again. Mm -hmm. But he's got two guys that are his go-to guys with Zephan Duarte and Griffin Garcia. One's a senior and one's a junior. Hey, John, the key to tonight to Hopeville having an excellent game or competitive and be in the game is their defense. 
they got to come and tackle and make sure they don't allow those big plays because with this offense that Palo Verde brings, they get their uh, lineman toe of feet, foot to foot and they just go at you. So it's, it's important that these linebackers and these defensive linemen hold them to those big plays. And that, if they do that, they'll have a chance to be competitive and be in the ballgame, John. And, and it's all smash, smash mouth football tonight here at Burger Stadium in Hodeville for the Desert League matchup between Palo Verde and Hodeville. And we will pause as we honor America and our men and women overseas with our national anthem. And ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back with more in a minute on the Valley Sports Network. Reducing energy use during the summer is more important than ever. This summer, IID encourages you to do your part by setting your thermostat to 78 degrees or higher, avoiding the use of large appliances between 4 and 9 p.m., and turning off all unnecessary lighting. But there's more. IID provides a number of summer energy-saving opportunities to help you make the most of your energy savings efforts. Check out our tips and energy saving guides at IID.com. Let's work together to stay cool and save energy this summer. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back here. I want to remind all our viewing audience tonight that elsewhere in the IVL, you've got Brawley and Imperial, a match of the unbeatens up there in, uh, I believe it's in Brawley, with Ron Rubio and guest announcer Mike Swearingen. Telexico tonight is having homecoming, and they're hosting the Southwest Eagles. And on the north end, you've got Vincent at Calipat. So there's a lot of exciting Friday night football here in the Imperial Valley tonight. And the captains are on the field getting ready to for, uh, toss the coin. And the captains for Hopeville are number 14. Joshua Perez. No, I'm sorry. My bad. Bentley Rothflesh, number 10. Ferdinand Velarde, number 56, Austin Trevino, and number 50, Elliot Ortiz. And we can't see the ones from Palo Verde, but they're out there, out there. And after the toss, looks like Hauteville. They will receive the ball first and kicking off for the the Palo Verde Yellow Jackets. We'll find out right now. But this is this is our Friday night. There was no Thursday night games last night, which is unusual in this 2022 season.
So as they come out onto the field, we want you to sit back and enjoy the game. Division four matchup. Again, Polo Verde and Hauteville. Number one, kicking off for is Leonardo Fernandez. Back to receive for the Vikings. Number one, Martin Torres. Up, you have Jaden Castro, number 11. And number nine, Andre Estrada. Here we go, John. Leonardo Fernandez kicking off for the Yellow Jackets. Hoville needs to, you know, take it downfield and hopefully consistently drive the football and eat some clock up tonight so they can keep, you know, their, keep the, the defense off the field. Exactly, and that's one of the keys because this is a, an explosive offense scoring points and touchdowns, the, the, the Yellow Jackets. A pooch kick, fair caught. Oh, that's number nine. That's Andre Estrada, but they call was he able catch? to come up with it? I believe so. Number three came up with it. That's Bryce Buscaglia, the quarterback. But there's some discussion on the field with the referees and John, I believe it's John Seaman out there. Seemed like he fumbled it, John. Okay. And he is mic'd up tonight. Nice. So we've got a referee that's mic'd up and that will take the doubt here from the announcers as they'll come up with the right call. I thought Hoville lucked out right now because I thought they fumbled it and muffed the ball and uh, Paulo Verde picked it up, but an inadvertent whistle. So we'll right. see, start it again. Yeah, you gotta be careful on those, on those uh, returns there that he waved his hand and then muffed it and then he couldn't come up with it or we don't know. But the kick by Leonardo Fernandez will happen again. Getting set, another pooch. Nice tackle. Fielded by number 11, Jaden Castro, right at the 33. And Bejerano, uh, Xavier Bejerano with the tackle. So Bejerano runs the ball, he's in special teams, and he's averaging 12, no, 10 yards per carry, almost 11. So that gives you an idea of the Palo Verde offense. So first and 10 for Hopeville. Not only that, John, he leads the team with 36 tackles so far. So, there he, so he's on both sides of the ball like an original 60 minute man. First and 10 at the 33. Buscaglia, everybody's in tight. Here we go, Zephan, ground, ground and pound. Zephan Duarte. He's gonna go right up the middle. Griff, I believe Griffin Garcia will take it a couple of yards up. He took got about four yards, John. Extremely, that's number 29. That is Daniel Ledesma. Hey, John, let's introduce the starting lineup for the Hopeville Vikings at quarterback, Bryce Buscalia, who's a junior. And then running back, we got Hector Sanchez and also their playmaker, Zevin Duarte. Uh, another running back that they have, they like I mentioned, multiple wing, the Griffin Garcia. They have at wide receiver Gonzalez. And we'll come back to that. And Ledesma again with the carry. And then introducing their uh, lineman, Austin Trevino, at the center position, at the left guard, Bra Brock Burnett. And then uh, left tackle, Colt Brischke. And then uh, the right uh, guard is Smith Hilficker and uh, Alex Roldan and uh, Rothlish, Rothlish, Rothlish is Roth, there. Rothlish, yes. Is there uh, Bentley receiver. Rothlish. And so it's a third down and about six. The ball inside the 40 at the 38 of Hauteville. And their defense lining up the defense for the Palo Verde Yellow Jackets. We have at safety Marcus Macon. Uh, Bejarano is a DB as well. Uh, Salazar is another DB. And then you have Dagnino and Ian Maciel who line up the, uh, finish up the defensive backfield. 
Nice tackle. And that is a rugby scrum, and Duarte, the ball carrier. Tackled by Macon, and uh, and then you have also number, number. It'll bring up a fourth down for the Vikings, a fourth and three. Number 12, Gabe Dagnino was in the tackle as well. And rounding up the defense uh, at the defensive end position, Crow, number 22, uh, Gonzalez Pinon, uh, and then uh, Felipe Maciel, number 55, Gomez, and number 62, Lorero. And Buscaglia will run out of the shotgun and is rolling out this way. Will decide to keep, get the first down as he runs out of bounds around the 46, but he'll pick up. Six yards, get a first and 10. That was an excellent uh, decision by the quarterback, John. Fourth and about six yards and knew he had enough to get to the first down and keep those chains moving. Didn't have to force it, didn't have to throw it downfield. So you also have to, as a quarterback, be able to run when it's necessary, not just throw the ball. Good job by number three. And so you'd mentioned Dagnino there, and he's probably the son of George Dagnino, who was a former coach here for Paulo Verde, but he ran a totally different offense. He threw the ball. Yeah, he, he threw the ball. <laughs> Completely different, nine day, huh? Yeah. First and 10 for the Vikes. Buscagli under center. Duarte will take the pitch and try to make it to midfield, and he does with a pickup of four yards. And this is what they have to keep on doing, is just keep on running the clock, uh, eating clock, and keeping their uh, defense off the field. And their offense, I mean, Paulo Verde's offense, uh, you don't want them to, you know, get the ball and, and as, far, as dangerous as they are running the ball, you want to keep them on the sideline as well. A little over nine minutes in the first quarter, and Hopeville with one first down, and now the second series of play with a second and six at midfield. So Buscaglia and company everybody in tight quick pitch number five breaking out and that is austin marini and picks Dag up two yards dagnino again on the tackle along with bejerano so good uh you know gang tackle if you will good job to stop him Hey, John, I was doing a little research on the uh, Palo Verde Holtville uh, history. They, they've faced uh, 15 times going back to 2000, and Palo Verde's won eight and Holtville won seven. So it's an even matchup uh, here uh, since, like I mentioned, 2000. And in the Desert League, you've got Holtville and Palo Verde usually up on top, but they threw in Vincent Memorial as a kind of a spoiler. And so Vincent Memorial ranked pretty high up in Division Five. They're three mm -hmm. so it's it's a tight race it'll be a tight race hopefully between vincent hoville and palo verde big Bus third down here buscaglia looking for his there was some the mishandling there was a fumble right there right that was a great job by the defensive line who created though that uh you know that uh just a a, a bunch of uh defensive line just allowed them to you know, stop the run and, and plug the holes. That's what I'm looking for here. They plugged it, and uh, now it's a, a critical fourth down for Holville, which is going for it. A little over seven minutes and counting in the first quarter. It looks like they may be, Buscagli is also a punter. So they may be thinking about this, maybe not. He was in the shotgun last time on a fourth down. And he is in the shotgun again on a fourth down and five to go. Looks like they're going for it. Yeah. And he's rolling out. Now he's throwing it. A man is there, caught. And that is number five, Marini, up the middle of seam route, gets a first down. He'll take it to the Palo Verde 25 yard line, move those chains for the Vikes. Nice catch. Uh, in, in, in traffic, uh, great job by Marini going up for that ball and, and cradling and, and was aggressive enough to go capture the ball. Nice throw by number three as well. So we mentioned about the passing and that, that's what Calexico, when they played Hopeville, uh, hardly ever passed, but when they did, they connected. 
you know, they're, they're mixing it up, which is a, a big key for them to drive the football into the end zone. And so far, you know, they're at the, they're the Palo Verde's 25-yard line. Marini bumping into people and looks like he's brought down for a loss. Jonathan Crow and number 27, Parker Lurero were both uh, disrupted that run. Good job. They got some big boys down the defensive line there, John. Jonathan Crow is one of the bigger players for Palo Verde. He is, uh, where is he, 6'1", 237 pounds. So he looks like a strong kid down they there. They got him at fullback and they got him at linebacker, right? He does go both ways. So a second and 13, a loss of three on the play for Hauteville. Five minutes, 15 seconds, first quarter. No score. They've uh, chewed up some clock here in the first quarter. Oh, absolutely. Good. The pitch to, is that Duarte? Yes, it is, and he'll get four, maybe five, as he'll take it inside the 25 to the 23-yard line. So we got about third and, and third and eight. And Hopeville has done a good job so far of, of holding on to the possession of the football and taking time off the clock. We're, we're now at 440 in the first quarter. Hey, John, and that's what you want to do and keep their uh, Palo Verde's offense off the field. They average about 44 points per game. So, uh, you know, you want to keep that uh, explosive offense off the field as much as possible. This is a great, uh, uh, a great drive for them. Uh, it, 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 they just need to sustain it and, and punch it into the end zone. Tonight's game is brought to you by Driscoll's, who's been serving the Imperial Valley since 1979. They take great pride in the years of experience and quality of custom silk screen and embroidery services. Make sure you stop by to check out their huge selection of sunglasses, sandals, and street clothes. It's located in El Centro on State Street and Imperial. That's Driscoll's. Buy burgers and beer for the best burgers in town. It's burgers and beer. In El Centro, open seven days a week and serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Come and watch the VSN Game of the Week at Burgers and Beer. Imperial Valley College, with 60 years of excellence, that's Imperial Valley College, proud sponsor of VSN's live stream. By RDO Equipment, sells the best brands like John Deere, Vermeer, Topcon, Whitgreen Group, and more on State Route 86 in Imperial, whether you're a seasoned pro in precision ag or just getting started. RDO Equipment Company is what you need for your success in the field. So 423 to go first quarter, no score with the Vikings. Getting closer to the red zone, they're at the 23, 24 yard line of Palo Verde. Buscaglia under center. Dropping back, deep drop, but is sat down by number 22, Crow. Jonathan Crow. He took a seven step drop, wasn't that? Uh, he draw, I didn't count the steps, but he should have released the ball. He was looking downfield, and uh, when you don't see anybody open, you need to have a clock on your head that you can't hold on to the ball that long. You need to get rid of that ball before they come and tackle you for a loss. So they, you got to play smarter than that when you're trying to get into the end zone, get the ball off your, uh, get the hands off your ball, the ball off your hands. That's what I mean. Usually, <laughs> you go back three to five steps, and very seldom do you see a seven-step drop, deep drop when you're close to the end zone. Anyway, so it's a fourth and about fifth, 25. And they're going for it. Buscaglia is throwing a screen, but couldn't find an open man. It was intended for number 29. Daniel Ledesma goes incomplete. I was surprised they didn't punt it, John. Uh, you know, fourth and about 20-something or 15, how many yards was it for a first down? Yeah, about 25. Our scoreboard doesn't give us the exact number, so we have to count. They they could have pinned the offense back, you know, a little deeper in, in their territory. So now you've got the Palo Verde offense on the field with Albañas, Macon, and Bejarano. So we'll see how, how uh, Hopeville 
does with this uh, explosive offense and running backs here. And Got a 4-3 defense. Quick pitch to number two, Macon. Will pick up five and take it to the 44. And like I mentioned, John, Hoville has to do an excellent job tackling tonight because uh, once you get daylight for these running backs, they're gone. They're, they're explosive, they're fast, they're shifty, and uh, they're, they're not really big, so they, they run low to the ground, uh, which, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to see. And so they just got to secure tackles. You've got to have the linemen in front there putting the stop on them because once they get behind the line, they're, it's hard to bring them down. That's Bejarano. Bejarano with a long hair, crossing midfield, getting a first down at the Viking 48. So moving the chains for Palo Verde in the first quarter. Three minutes to go, no score in the ball game. And that's, you know, that's, that's who they are. Just run downhill and, and uh, look for a crease to, to explode and, and uh, make a big play. So the defensive line's got to put more pressure, just move forward and, 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 and block those running lanes. First and 10, Yellow Jackets, Macon. There he goes. Uh, he's, gone. he's gone to the outside. And I don't know if anybody's going to bring him down. Touchdown, Palo Verde. Right from the 48-yard line, a 48-yard touchdown run for Marcus Macon, putting six points on the board for the Yellow Jackets. And that's his uh, 17th. Rushing touchdown for the season. And that puts him over 4,000 career yards rushing for Marcus Macon. Congratulations. And awesome. VSN would like to congratulate the Palo Verde community on a milestone for Marcus Macon. As he reaches 4,000 career yards. Penalty flag on the point after. We'll hear with a call from John Seaman. So an encroachment call. So, you know, 4,000 yards. I mean, you, you, wow, bro. I uh, mean, uh, this kid uh, will hopefully have an opportunity to play Saturdays at the next level next year. Uh, somebody will give him that chance uh, with his speed, with his elusiveness, uh, his quickness. Uh, he, he has an opportunity. We'll hopefully be able to see him on Saturdays. He only needed 24. He got that double, so he's up to 4,024 yards because it was a 48-yard run for Marcus Macon. Congratulations. And they went for two. They got it. And he got it. So with two minutes, 41 seconds to go in this first quarter, 8-0, Palo Verde. We'll be back with more in a minute on the Valley Sports Network. Whether you're looking to purchase or sell, your next home awaits. Give the Dom team a call. With over 50 years of experience and over 100 years in the Imperial Valley, Andy and Doug can help you find the right home at the right price fast. Visit us online at www.thedomteam.com and let Andrew and Doug find the perfect home for you. Call today, 760-337-8600. Well, we're back, ladies and gentlemen. The Yellow Jackets are kicking off to the Vikings here in the first quarter of play. And we just witnessed history in the making in that last series. John, their, their defense for the Hopeville, like, like I mentioned, it's critical that those linebackers step up and uh, make those tackles. Uh, outside linebacker wasn't nowhere near him, and he was able to find an open hole and run outside and break it for a touchdown. Leonardo with a pooch. It muffed. Palo Verde got it. And Palo Verde, their offense is on the field, number five. Marini couldn't hang on to it. And that ball was picked up by number 40, Diego Rivera. The artist. <laughs> so a first and 10 now for 
the Yellow Jackets. When you're playing a team uh, of uh, Palo Verde's caliber, you can't afford to make these mistakes, uh, no. especially with the two running backs that they have. Now they got a, uh, it's crucial right now that they cr uh, put a big stop on this particular drive and get the ball back. Bejarano with the ball. And stopped by number 56 for the Vikings. Austin Trevino. But not after he picks up seven yards. It'll make it a second and three. You, you see those running backs have a different gear, John. They, they're explosive and they just get the ball and, and are able to, you know, just turn it up a notch into a different gear. Yeah. They're fast. And that's why it's critical to plug those holes. They got a number 10, the ball carrier. And that's uh, Matthew Robertson. So somebody different from the uh, Bejerano and Macon uh, running back is uh, Robertson getting the ball, getting an opportunity. Stopped there by number 69 for Hauteville. That's Alexis Roldan. And so no gain on the play for the Yellow Jackets. Big third down here, John, third and six. They got to get a big stop. They get a big stop, forces them to either punt or go for it, uh, and they have an opportunity to get the ball back. So. We'll see how uh, the defense for Hopeville fares. A minute and a half to go first quarter. Third down and six. Albanes to Marcus Macon going toward the outside. Close to first down. Looks like he may have got it. He's got to get to the 29 for a first down. It's so hard and difficult for those defensive backs when you have two, three guys coming at you and one of them or two of them are, are uh, pulling uh, guard or, or tackle. They're coming right at you. And as a defensive back, you're typically not that big. And trying to, you know, shed those blocks, is, it's, a, it's a difficult challenge for them to do. Looks like Marcus Macon is now on the field getting tended okay. to. Tonight's game is brought to you by Esquid Realty, your hometown real estate office in Calexico and serving the entire Imperial Valley for 30 years. Go see Mark Esquid at Esquid Realty, 357-9707. Esquid Realty, the mark of excellence. Subscribe to our VSN YouTube channel and follow VSN on Instagram. By Arctic Air Conditioning and Heating, we know that having the right people on the job is just as important as choosing the best equipment. Our York trained professionals provide you with top quality equipment, skilled installation, and an expert analysis of your comfort needs. Contact Arctic Air at 352-8855. By Letterman and Bros, have you earned your varsity letter? We'll get your Letterman jacket started today. Call Dan at 693-5034 at Letterman and Bros. So first and 10 for the Yellow Jackets. At the 29 of Hauteville. Rio Albanez under center. And that's Bejarano, this time brought down almost immediately by number 10. Furman Velarde, who's their leading tackler. Hey, John, uh, Macon was uh, back up on his feet, and it seems like he's uh, doing okay now. Maybe just a little stinger or something. I wonder if he's getting interest from colleges. I'm sure he is. Small colleges. Yeah. I hope he is. Getting a scholarship is the most important thing for going to the next level. College education. Absolutely. Second and nine. Bejarano on that quick pitch. Turns it up, but there's a penalty flag on the field after a pickup of three. So a five-yard penalty, thank you, John Seaman, a five-yard penalty on the Yellow Jackets. We'll move that ball back. Hey, John, I also want to point out that uh, Furman Velarde, who we called his number on earlier, number 10 for the Vikings defense, he's their leading tackler so far with 58 total tackles that we have on the stats book here. Outstanding. And he's a junior, so he'll be back next year too. Under 
Seven minutes, seven seconds to go in this first quarter. 8-0. The Yellow Jackets on top. And that's the end of the first quarter. We'll be back with more in a minute on the Valley Sports Network. So as we switch sides now and start the second quarter of play, Paulo Verde at the Viking 34-yard line on a second and 14. Rio Albanez under center. Someone new is getting the football number 10 for the Yellow Jackets. Matthew Robinson. Oh, Robertson. So a pickup of five. It'll and, be. And the tackle there was uh, Furman Velarde again. Again, Furman Velarde. Third and nine for the Yellow Jackets at the Hootville 28. Rio Albanez under center. Marcus Macon. Gets a block, goes toward the outside and to the 15 yard line, a first and 10, a pickup of 13 yards, move those chains for the Yellow Jackets. As we start the second quarter of play. As hard as it is for those defensive backs, John, to come up and, and shed those blocks, it is uh, once again critical for them to come up and, and make that stop. Uh, they got to find a way to, to evade those blockers and, uh, and make the tackle, make the stop. Well, they've got, they've got the uh, big backs and the fast backs. Quick pitch to Bejarano going to the outside. He could be going all the way. Stumbles inside the five to about the two yard line. Another first and goal for the Yellow Jackets. So, there's no flags out there, is there? No, they're getting wow. set to, right there at the two yard line. Another pickup of 12, 13 yards. And uh, the Bryce Buscalia with the touchdown uh, uh, tackle to save that touchdown. or Touchdown saving tackle? Yeah, that's what I meant to say. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Bejarano will get it again and walks into the end zone. Touchdown, Paulo Verde from a couple of yards out. The Yellow Jackets are on the board, extending their lead now to 14 to zero as they will try for the point after. I hope they'll have to make some adjustments with the defensive front, John. Uh, they're, they're, they're not getting any uh, penetration uh, to create, uh, you know, uh, uh, block those running lanes. And, and they got to figure out whether they have to slant more, they got to stunt. Uh, they're just going straight up. And unfortunately, they're not uh, blocking those running, uh, running lanes. And the point after by number 14, Joshua Perez is good. So it is now 15 to zero. 
favor of the Yellow Jackets. Reach Medical Response Service. Donnie Wharton reminds you that when seconds count, you can depend on Reach Medical Transportation Services by Jimmy Sanders Incorporated Architecture and Engineering. Sanders is a proud supporter of Imperial Valley football, and we wish all the Imperial Valley schools a safe and successful season. By Grasso's Italian Restaurant, a tradition since 1955. Family owned and operated, located at 1902 West Main in El Centro. Go see Hank, try the double-sided garlic bread, tell him John sent you orders to go or come in and experience that fine Italian dining. We got number one, uh, Leonardo Fernandez kicking off for the Palo Verde Yellow Jackets and number one, Martin Torres back deep for the Hopeville Vikings on the return. Pooch toward the outside. Fair catch by uh, number nine, Andre Estrada. Tonight's game is also brought to you by Imperial Printers. What can we print for you today at 430 West Main in El Centro? From business cards to yard signs. And by Intercare since 1970. When it comes to health care, Intercare is here to help with locations throughout the Imperial Valley. Formerly Clinicas de Salud del Pueblo, Intercare improving the health and wellness of the community. Right here, John, uh, Hoville's got to put a drive and get that ball in the end zone. Going down, down, being down 15-0, you can't afford to go down another touchdown. Nope, in the second quarter with 9.49 to go. Uduarte with a pitch will pick up six. And look like there may have been an exchange, but you, they Hoville has down. the ball. They, they called, called him down, down yeah. So a, actually a pickup of five. The ball that's spotted at the 30. So I'm curious to see if they're going to air it out too, pass the ball. They, they were successful in a pass earlier. Not only that, they're on a rollout with the quarterback. They were able to get a big first down. So that quarterback is athletic, could throw the ball a little bit, and he could move. So they got to use him as well as a weapon. But he, th he threw it back as he's rolling out to this way. Mm -hmm. So that, that in itself is a difficult task. So Bryce Buscaglia under center. Marini with the ball. And he'll take it in the middle for a pickup of two. It'll be third and short. The ball at the 33 yard line. So Marini is related to Gavin Marini from Central. I believe they're cousins. They're both standout athletes. They 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 are good football players. Yeah. 8:24, second quarter. Buscaglia under center. Duarte. And nothing there. Maybe Yard. It'll bring up a fourth and two. We have a player down on the field, John. For 73, the lineman. But he's he's getting up now here. A little shaken up. Looks like he's okay. Shaking it off. That is Smith Hilficker. Smith Hilficker. So Buscagi will have to punt this time. And, and not not uh, I wonder if they're going for it, John. He had a little meeting with the coach on the sideline there. Well, he can punt, or he can throw, or he can run, so. Looks like they're not punting, they're going for it. Wow. Bravery. And he'll keep it on the ground. And looks like he got it, John. He, he did get it. Takes guts, John. It does. <laughs> it does, and he showed a lot of guts there. So he gets a first and 10 with a pickup of three yards. So an outstanding keeper by Bryce Buscaglia. He's a big kid. He's about what six, about six two. He's a tall kid. Uh, you got to, you know, use his length. And they did a good job with the sneak there. He was able to get the first down.
648, second quarter. 15-0, Palo Verde with the Hauteville Vikings on a first and 10 at their own 36. Hey, John, this defense has eight guys in the box, or eight players in the box, meaning that everybody's playing up front and, and, and playing the run. So you, the, the way to beat that is by passing the ball. And if you try to run eight guys uh, a post uh, versus six or seven, you're outmanned. So uh, the, the key thing to do on that playing that type of front is to throw the ball a little bit. What, do you got to cover zero then? They got the cover three. They got three, they three, got guys, deep, three guys deep. But they're in the linebacking position. They know they're not going to throw. Now they, yeah, you got cover three there. That's Duarte. That's actually Marini. Marini, number five. That was a tough run. He'll pick up three, take it to the 43. How about a little play action, you know? It may, yeah. Make him think they're going to run the ball and then just pull it back and throw it over the top. Got, got to keep the defense on their toes, John. You can't just be predictable and run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, but that's their style. Second and short for Hoville. Duarte will take the ball, lowers his shoulders, gets a first down. It'll, Close to it. Yeah, well, it looks like from here it crosses the 45 and takes it to the 46. And number 11 with the tackle, which was uh, Jaden Castro. I'm sorry, that's Ty Phipps, I apologize. Ty Phipps is a senior coming up and making that tackle. That must be uh, Jeff Phipps' uh, son. Uh, Jeff Phipps was an outstanding quarterback back in 1993, 1992-93. He led his uh, Palo Verde Jackets uh, to a great uh, record that year and also earned a scholarship to uh, University of Pacific, was a quarterback for them. Okay, okay, so that's, that's his kid. 4.49 to go, second quarter. The Town Pump Steakhouse open Tuesday through Saturday. Call for reservations at 344-3663 in Westmoreland. The Town Pump serves up a delicious savory steak and lobster dinner. Come by and experience the Valley tradition for over 50 years. Marianne Valenzuela is your State Farm Insurance agent. And like a good neighbor, she's located at 528 G Street in Brawley. Call. Marianne Valenzuela Fenley at 344-0447 for all your insurance needs. State Farm. Ray Castillo, Supervisor District 5, is a proud sponsor of VSN. And Ray Castillo would like to thank his constituents of District 5 and reminds everyone to get involved in their community. And by the Dom team. For your real estate needs, give Doug or Andrew a call at 337-8600. The Dom family has been in the Valley since 1908. For business, residential, or farmland real estate, it's the Dom team. Hey, John, first down here with 449 left. If they could sustain a drive and, and chew up the clock, it'd be great for them and uh, go up or go down by a touchdown. And Duarte, the ball carrier, didn't get much there, but there and there's a penalty flag on the field thrown by the back judge, or they call him the umpire. Big penalty there, John. A chop block, 15. They're going to move it back. <laughs> Back to about the 31. Yeah, they were getting some momentum there. Yeah. So 4.43 to go second quarter. Here in this Division Four Desert League matchup, Hauteville and Palo Verde. They got to figure out a way to drive the ball and put in the end zone, John. If they do that, they'll be in good position for the second half. Right. 
You never know about this, this Palo Verde team with, when they get the ball. So first and 25. There you go, Rolling pass. out, just like you said. And a pass intended for number 13. That is Brian Padilla. Throw a little too, too much in front of him. Well, John, when you're rolling out to your backside, which is the left side as a quarterback and a right-handed quarterback, you have to be able to set your feet and set and use your back leg to, to create drive on the football and throw it with more velocity. When you're moving back as you're, you're moving to the left and you're off balance, it's a hard throw to do. So he's got to figure out how to stay balanced and deliver the football right on the numbers. So, second and 25, but it's good that he was able to sh change it up and throw the ball. Look, look, that's Duarte. And that was a, a, a rough, hard hit by number five, Bejerano. Not only is he able to run the ball, but he is pretty aggressive when it comes to tackling. Good tackle by number five. And Duarte didn't get much there. So now big third down. A long third down, John. Third and 25. They've got to get to the Yellow Jacket 44, and they're at the 32, their own 32. Zevin Duarte, number 17, is walking off the field. He took that hard hit by Bejerano. I hope he's okay. We've got some updates in Calipat. 13-0 Vincent over the Hornets, and in Imperial, uh, leading Brawley 7-0, close to the, probably in the second quarter by now. That's going to be a close, tight game, John. That is. A classical matchup. And looking for number five, Marini, as Buscaglia is rolling out. Marini was running, and he didn't turn around for that ball, John. There's a miscommunication there. Uh, Bryce Bus uh, Buscaglia threw the ball well. He put it around his, uh, uh, close to him, but uh, once again, Marini was, you know, didn't turn around. And it was almost picked off. Luckily, it wasn't. Now they're going to punt it here. So now they'll have to punt, and back to receive is Bejarano. Standing at his own 35-yard line. If I was hoping, I would kick it away from him. <laughs> right, because he'll be in overdrive in just 10 yards. So it's a high punt end over end. Takes a ball already bounce and will be downed at the 49. Number 14, Bentley Rothflesh. So Palo Verde gets the ball back with three minutes in the second quarter. Decent field position at the 40. Ah, at the 49. That was a, an important drive for Holtville. Unfortunately, they shot themselves in the foot with that big penalty. But, uh, you know, when you have an opportunity to get the ball and, 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 and sustain a drive and run some clock uh, off, the, uh, off the clock or some time off the clock, uh, it's important that you capitalize on that. You don't want to go down three touchdowns here, John, in the, uh, before the half. No, of course not. They've, they've got to get some momentum coming their way. Rio Albanez, give it to the big man, Crow, and he'll cross to the 40 and uh, picks up, looks like 10 yards, Jonathan Crow. Number six, Hector Sanchez with the tackle. He, he went down low. Uh, he didn't want any, any part of that big guy. I wouldn't either. But good tackle. He's, uh, when they're, so, they're big. Uh, you know, I tell my, my nine-year-old who plays, a uh, 10-year-old now who plays uh, tackle football is to go low whether you're playing as big physical guys take their legs down yeah because mano a mano it's tough and jonathan crow again with the carry picks up five jonathan crow six one and he's about the biggest back we've probably seen in the valley you get him going, you get him going downhill. Like the, the linebackers you know? and defensive back don't want any part of it. <laughs> no, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. DBs don't want to mess with that. Crow will get the they ball feed again. Him again. And he's just a man among boys out there, picking up 12, 13 yards, taking it to the 20. 
Tackled by number 13, Brian Padilla there. So timeout is called with two minutes to go in the second quarter. Paulo Verde takes a timeout. With recycling now more important than ever, CNR Incorporated has developed innovative recycling and reuse programs. CRNR Incorporated, the face of a greener generation. By Heart Insurance Center, for over 70 years, Heart Insurance has provided insurance solutions to the residents of Brawley, El Centro, and surrounding areas throughout California. We have a heart for insurance. Look for a new location in Brawley on K Street. Your county supervisor, District 1, Jesus Cachu Escobar, is a proud sponsor of VSN. And he would like to thank his constituents of District 1. And he hopes for good things to come for all our Valley schools. By Johnny's Burritos, founded in 1963 by Johnny and Ana Maria Palomino. Delicious homemade Mexican and American food located in Imperial and Brawley. Johnny's Burritos. Rio Albañas. Kind of fooled me. Was that uh, Bejarano on the carry? Bejarano was with uh, on the carry there. So picking up six for the Yellow Jackets. And number 24, Griffin Garcia with the tackle there. They'll take it to the 15 yard line for a second. They got foot to foot and, five. and they're coming downhill, John. Toe to toe, no splits. Bejarano again, and this time is brought down hard by number 10, but with flags on the field. Furman Velarde, again, the leading tackler for the Vikings uh, with an excellent tackle, but we'll see what the, the referee called there with the flag. A minute and a half to go, second quarter. So, Critical penalty here late in the second quarter gives the Yellow Jackets excellent field position, half the distance to the goal line. So they're going to put it right about the five yard line and a first and goal. They got to come up with a big stop here. They, like I mentioned, can't afford to go down three touchdowns going at a half. That's tough to come back to that. Macon. Finds a room, fumbles the football way back there. Did they get it? And it may be recovered by Holtville. It is. That's what they Marcus needed, John. Macon on a fumble inside the five gives a sporting chance to the Holtville Vikings. That was a great play and, and a great effort by their leading tackler, Fairman Velarde, who got a hand on the running back, forced them to make a cut and then uh, other uh, teammates came in and, and, and got the ball out of his hand. So great defensive stop. That's exactly what you need. Now you got to figure out uh, one minute, 25 seconds, how to march down the field, 91 yards, John. They got to figure out a big play, maybe, you know, be creative with his offense, uh, maybe throw the ball a little bit, maybe go to the outside. Uh, but they, they got to sustain a drive in one minute and well, 25 seconds. Well, Butch, what is, what is Palo Verde expecting out of Hauteville right now? Run. <laughs> You're right about switching it up. Trying to get some running room there. Number 22, look at him go. Great effort. Number 24, Garcia. Griffin Garcia runs to the outside and gets a first and 10 with a minute 14. That's an excellent effort, John, by uh, Garcia there, who just kept his legs pumping and driving. That's what you teach these kids, is you can't let one defensive guy or two defensive, he had to run, he had three on him, and he was able to, with this second effort, get about maybe an extra eight, nine yards there. Excellent run. Very excellent run, and the ball is now inside the 20 at about the 18 of Hauteville. Buscaglia under center. He's going to give it to Garcia again. As he tries to turn it up the field, only gets uh, three yards, maybe four. So it'll bring up a second and six. 30 seconds to go. Hey, John, these uh, jerseys are hard to read. These numbers with the white and yellow, it's so difficult to. 
Not very read. much contrast. No. Tonight's game is brought to you by Ivy Welding and Mechanical Industrial Welding Contractor, serving the geothermal and all industrial facilities in the Imperial Valley. Ivy Welding, a proud sponsor of Valley Sports Network. Call Fred at 760-482-WELD. And listen to the Que Pasa Calexico podcast for candid conversations with many of Imperial Valley personalities. Que Pasa Calexico with Jose Alejos. Learn, grow, and make the Imperial Valley a better place. By Ojeda Industries, Tony and Patricia Ojeda serving the Imperial Valley for all your industrial and agricultural needs. They specialize in hydraulic service and repair, located in Brawley at 1698 Jones Street. By Havens Landscaping, for all your rock and landscaping materials, go to Havens Landscaping in El Centro. Call them at 352-6735. You want to stay up to date with the latest in Imperial Valley sports coverage? Follow us on Twitter at Valley Sports Net and make sure to have post notifications turned on. By the El Centro Police Department, who we are dedicated to serve our community through partnerships, professionalism, and uncompromising excellence. Quality of life, protection, and service is our commitment. The El Centro Police Department. It is halftime, folks, with a score 15-0. Paulo Verde will be back with more in a minute on the Valley Sports Network. Day in and day out, your publicly owned Imperial Irrigation District proudly delivers low-cost, reliable energy service to its customers in the Imperial and Coachella Valleys. When compared to other power providers, IID's residential, commercial, and governmental customers all save up to 50% on their monthly energy bills. That's because IID is committed to more than just delivering power. IID is committed to you. IID, where customers always come first. El Distrito de Irrigación de Imperial, su entidad pública, ha proporcionado servicio de energía confiable y económico a sus clientes en los valles de Imperial y Coachella. Comparado con otros proveedores de energía, los clientes residenciales, comerciales y gubernamentales del IIT ahorran hasta un 50% en sus facturas. Es porque el IIT está comprometido a más que solo proporcionar energía. El IIT está comprometido con usted. IIT, donde los clientes siempre son primero. Make COVID-19 boosters part of your summer plan. Children five years of age and older are now eligible for a COVID-19 Pfizer booster. The vaccine is safe, free, and effective. Visit myturn.ca.gov or call 442-265-6700 to schedule your child's appointment or find a clinic near you. Have a safe summer. Get boosted. Visit myturn.ca.gov or call 442-265-6700. At Burgers and Beer, our customers are like family. Let's hear what a few of them have to say about us. We're here at Burgers and Beer with the best burgers in town. We get to sit together and enjoy the great food. I like when Burgers and Beer is illuminated. For the fresh iced tea, whether it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner. It is wonderful, very fast, very efficient. I love the great food and family environment. I love the burgers and the customer service. So come and see us and find out for yourself at Burgers and Beer.
Reducir el uso de energía durante el verano es más importante que nunca. Este verano, IID le anima a hacer su parte. Al ajustar su termostato a 78 grados o más, evitar usar electrodomésticos principales de 4 a 9 pm y apagar luces innecesarias. Pero aún hay más. IID ofrece un número de oportunidades de ahorro de energía. Conozca nuestros consejos de ahorro de energía en IID.com. Trabajemos juntos para estar frescos y para ahorrar energía este verano. If I can draw your attention to the 50-yard line at this time, on the far side of the field. Please welcome our first homecoming princess, Brooke Strong. Miss Strong is being escorted tonight by her parents, Chris and Lisa Strong. Brooke is a 16-year-old junior at Hope Bell High and is a varsity member on our Viking volleyball and softball. 
softball team. She is also an active member of our Yellow Ribbon and SCA clubs. Brooke is also one of our commissioners of publicity on and beat this year. Brooke says her favorite high school memory is winning CIF for freshman year as a member of the varsity softball team and getting to play in the regional state championship on her home field. Brooke would like to thank her sister Callie for always being her role model and her best friend. She would like to also thank her parents for being her biggest fans and for motivating her to be her best and for always knowing how to put a smile on her face. Ladies and gentlemen, Brooke Strong. Our first friend tonight is Brady Walker. Brady is being escorted tonight by his mother, Amy Walker. Brady is a 16-year-old junior at Hopewell High School. He's a member of our varsity basketball team as well as an active member of our FFA program and our Yellow Ribbon Club. Brady's favorite high school memory so far has been playing basketball with all of his friends. He would like to thank his mom and dad for always supporting him. Ladies and gentlemen, Brady Walker. Our next princess is Jasmine Gearwall. Jasmine is being escorted tonight by her mother, Mariana Gearwall, and her father, Jared Gearwall. Jasmine is a 16-year-old junior at Hillsville High School, where she is a varsity member of our Viking volleyball, cheer, and basketball team. She is also involved in the band and step environmental club. Jasmine is also one of our commissioners of spirit on ASB this year. Jasmine's favorite high school memory so far has been playing basketball, sports, spending time with her friends. She would like to thank her family for always supporting her. Ladies and gentlemen, Jasmine Gearwall. Our next friend tonight is Blaze Vesey. Blaze is being escorted tonight by his mother, Jane Vesey, and his father, Josh Vesey. Blaze is a 16 year old junior at Holdsville High School where he is a varsity member of our football and golf team. Blaze is also an active member of the FSA and also serves on the junior fair board. His favorite high school memory so far has been coaching the championship basketball team made up of middle school and high school students for the FSA Sectional Leadership Conference. Blaze would like to say to his parents, I owe you everything for the motivation you have given to me and for always keeping me busy with hard work. Thank you for making sure that I am the best version of myself. Ladies and gentlemen, Blaze Becky. Now moving on to our king and queen candidates. Our first queen candidate this evening is Ms. Cameron Walker. Cameron is being escorted tonight by her dad, Kevin Walker. where she is a varsity member of our volleyball, basketball, and softball teams. She is also an active member of our Yellow Ribbon and SCA. Cameron is also a three-year member of CSS. After graduation, Cameron plans on attending a four-year Christian university and continuing her career as an athlete while she studies sports, psychology, or sports management. Cameron's favorite high school memories so far include winning CIS for softball, winning league for volleyball, basketball, and softball, and getting to play these sports with her best friend. Cameron would like to thank her parents for always supporting her and pushing her to be the best version of herself. She would also like to thank her entire family for their endless love and support. Lastly, she would like to thank Ms. McClure for always being there for her and listening to her. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Cameron Walker. Our first team candidate is Mr. Bentley Rothlesh. He is being escorted tonight by his mother, Lady Rothlesh, and his grandpa, Joe Rothlesh. Bentley is a 17-year-old senior at Hopewell High School, where he is actively involved in sports and the physics club. Bentley is also a three-year member of CSS. After graduation, Bentley plans on going to college and studying engineering. His favorite memory in high school so far has been the Laughlin Tournament for the basketball team. Bentley would like to thank his mom for shaping him into who he is today. Ladies and gentlemen, Bentley Rothlesh. Our next team candidate is Ms. Aubrey Moreno. Aubrey is being escorted tonight by her mother, Aurora Moreno, and her father, Hector Moreno. Aubrey is 
is a 17-year-old senior at Hobo High School, where she is a varsity member of our Viking cheerleading and wrestling team. She is also a CSS and AVID and part of our AVID program. After graduation, Aubrey plans on attending college and majoring in psychology. Her favorite memory of high school so far is her freshman year of basketball season. family for always supporting her and her coaches that have always encouraged and pushed her to achieve her goals. Lastly, she would like to thank her best friend, Alyssa Enriquez, for always being there and supporting her throughout the years. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Aubrey Moreno. Our next team candidate is Mr. Ethan Escamilla.
Reducing energy use during the summer is more important than ever. This summer, IID encourages you to do your part by setting your thermostat to 78 degrees or higher, avoiding the use of large appliances between 4 and 9 p.m., and turning off all unnecessary lighting. But there's more. IID provides a number of summer energy-saving opportunities to help you make the most of your energy savings efforts. Check out our tips and energy saving guides at IID.com. Let's work together to stay cool and save energy this summer. Whether you're looking to purchase or sell, your next home awaits. Give the Dom team a call. With over 50 years of experience and over 100 years in the Imperial Valley, Andy and Doug can help you find the right home at the right price fast. Visit us online at www.thedomteam.com and let Andrew and Doug find the perfect home for you. Call today, 760-337-8600. Your publicly owned Imperial Irrigation District proudly delivers low-cost, reliable energy service to its customers in the Imperial and Coachella Valleys. When compared to other power providers, IID's residential, commercial, and governmental customers all save up to 50% on their monthly energy bills. That's because IID is committed to more than just delivering power. IID is committed to you. IID, where customers always come first. From the Chocolate Mountains to the Sea of Cortez, all along the border on a Friday night, this is exciting Valley Sports Network football, Imperial Valley football on Valley Sports Network. For Butch Morales, this is John Moreno. We're here live at the Hauteville Palo Verde matchup in Division Four, but more importantly, in the Desert League. And we've just seen two quarters of play with 15 points being scored by the Palo Verde Yellow Jackets and the Hopeville Vikings not able to get that momentum they need to sustain a drive here in Burger Stadium at Hopeville. Butch, what do you think about the first half? Hey, John, 15 points is, is not bad. They're still in the ball game. They just got to find a way to move the ball and get the ball in the end zone. You go, you get a score and you're back in the ball game. You know, uh, against a team that averages 44 points a game to only hold them for 15 points, they're looking good. Onside. And it'll be Paul already ball. And who was the one that fell on it? Number 22, the big guy. He did an outstanding job. Anyone that plays the uh, front line on a kickoff return if the ball's ever kicked to you and it's on the ground, it's just to grab it, go down with it, and protect that football, uh, 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 you know, securing the football. That's what you want to do. Good job by Crow. And excellent field position at the 49-yard line for the Yellow Jackets. And like I mentioned earlier, John, is they got to find a creative way on get the, getting those uh, defensive line, uh, getting them back in the, in, the, in the running lane so it prevents them from making those big plays. So we'll see. Bejarano. And hot brought down 
hard by number 10. Number 10 is Fermin Berlardi. Right, he was a form tackling uh, exhibition right there. He's been impressive, John. He's he's a hard-nosed tackler and goes uh, flies to the ball and wraps up and brings down textbook tackle and, uh, you know, a, a gain of about five, four yards there. Second and six from the 48-yard line. We'll call it the 48. Second and six. So the Yellow Jackets in, with possession and maybe on the move. And that's Marcus Macon. He'll pick up another four and crossing to the 44. Hey, John, you know what's coming. Defense is aware that they're going to run it downhill, and they just got to, you know, get that big stop here on that third down. It's Macon, Bejarano, or Crow. And that's, you know, you know who's getting it. Come and catch us. So a third now and three yards to go with Rio Albañez under center. That is Crow gets a first down. He'll cross the 40, pick up six yards on the carry. The ball carrier tackled by a host of Vikings. And number 69, Alexis Roldan. Roldan was on the tackle there. And he's coming in from his defensive line position. So first and 10 for the Yellow Jackets. The ball at the Viking 39-yard line. 10 minutes to go, third quarter. There you go, toe-to-toe, -to -toe. foot to foot. No splits. Bejarano. Oh, and brought down immediately by number 73. That is Smith Hilficker. Great job there on, on beating the offensive guard and getting through the hole and making that tackle. Excellent uh, defensive play by Hilficker there. We've got an update for Calexico and Southwest at the half. 21-0, 21-7, Calexico. We'll get more scores as they come to us. So a second and 10. So no gain on the last play for the Yellow Jackets. We'll see what type of adjustments Holtville uh, has made here. They're getting more penetration and uh, you know, getting those uh, running lanes uh, blocked there. Bejarano with a reverse to Macon at the 30, the outside, and he could go all the way, but his Hit out of bounds with a touchdown saving tackle by number three, Bryce Buscalia. The quarterback, now from his DB position, saved a touchdown. That was a great misdirection play by the offense there. They, you know, countered one way and brought it by the other way. So good job there by a good play call there. By the Yellow Jacks changing it up. Yes. So now a first and goal at the four for the Yellow Jackets. A big play by Macon. And they'll probably go to Crow. They do. Exactly what they did. And right smack up the A-gap for a touchdown. Palo Verde from a few yards out. Another six points on the board for the Yellow Jackets. That misdirection play, John, uh, the huge play got uh, uh, their running back, uh, Macon, with the big play, and then now they're able to punch it in with their big guy there, Crow. So it is now 21, going for the point after. And it's Joshua Perez with the extra point there. So with 8.56 to go, third quarter, 22-0. Paul Alberti. Yellow uh, Driscoll's has been serving the Imperial Valley since 1979, and they take great pride in the years of experience and quality of custom screen, silk screen, and embroidery services. Make sure you stop by and check out their huge selection of sunglasses, Sandals and street clothes. That's Driscoll's on State and Imperial in El Centro. Buy burgers and beer for the best burgers in town. 
Check out Burgers and Beer in El Centro, open seven days a week, serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Come watch the VSN Game of the Week at Burgers and Beer. By Imperial Valley College, founded in 1962. Proud sponsors of VSN live streaming for all Imperial Valley High School sports. IVC, fostering excellence in education for 60 years. By RDO Equipment, sells the best brands like John Deere, Vermeer, Topcon, and Whit Whit Ritken Group and more on State Route 86 in Imperial. RDO Equipment Company is what you need for your success in the field. Leonardo Fernandez uh, will be kicking for the Jackets. And pooching it up. And they're catching it number 11 for the Vikings. Jaden Castro. Hey, John, I wanted to clear up uh, uh, something I mentioned earlier. I said uh, Ty Phipps is the son of Jeff Phipps. It's actually the nephew of Jeff Phipps, so apologize about that, Jeff. Uh, I want to shout out to him, an uh, excellent Paulo Verde quarterback in the 90s. And when you played Paulo Verde uh, back in 93. That wasn't the last game of the season, was it? I don't know if I can't, can't remember what that. Was. Usually, Paulo Verde was one of the last games when, when I was playing back in the mm -hmm. in the seventies. Typically, and it is uh, you know one of our last games, and uh, we it was a rough trip to having always going <laughs> up there. Right. Oh, those hills, man. Yep, that I do remember. First and ten for the Vikes, rolling out, Buscaglia, stutter steps, looking for an open man. Oh, and that, that's uh, unnecessary, but there is no flag there. It's a hard hit. He led with the helmet. Yeah. So a loss of two yards. Second and 12. Hey, John, speaking of uh, when we were playing in the 90s, uh, uh, this field reminds me of... Uh, when I used to come here and watch Mario Lizarraga, who was uh, an all, uh, uh, all CIF, all, uh, all league running back for Hopeville Vikings in the 90s, he also ran over 4,000 yards. Uh, about, he's a Hall of Fame. He went in the class of 2005 with me. Wow. Uh, an excellent running back. He, uh, he was a running back since a sophomore, Mario Lizarraga. So 4,000 yards just like Marcus Macon. Yes, this is uh, from, uh, like I mentioned, Hopeville Vikings. Griffin Garcia gets some yardage there and picks up about seven. We'll take it to the 33, third and six for the Vikings. Hey, John, this is when I uh, when when leadership counts again. We talked about it last week. When you're down 22 to zero in the third quarter, you got to dig in deep, find a way to uh, march down the field and put in the end zone. You don't want to go down another another score. You want to keep it at three and maybe possibly get a touchdown here. That's absolutely right with Griffin Garcia finding some running room with a first and 10 and a pulling guard in front of him. We'll get a good pick up there and uh, set the ball at the 40 yard line. That was one of their best runs all game, uh, all night long. He had a chance to bounce it off outside, had room, but uh, decided to follow his block, but still gained uh, about uh, more than 10 yards there. So a first and 10 for Hopeville. Seven and a half minutes to go third quarter. Down 22-0. So Hopeville gaining some momentum thus far. Garcia, not, not much there. And he's brought down right behind the line of scrimmage. Excellent defensive line push by the Palo Verde Yellow Jackets. We're able to get pressure in there and uh, stop, stop him short of, of a yard. And a penalty flag on the field. We have a dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct on number 15, Calabroni, pushing after the play. This is his first unsportsmanlike of the game. One more, and he has ejected himself. Wow. So a big penalty against the Yellow Jackets. We'll move the ball up to the 46. Perfect opportunity for the Vikings to capitalize on this mistake here. Now they're in. Uh, Palo Verde Yellow Jackets side of the field 
with about maybe 46 yards to go to the end zone here. Hopefully they could uh, sustain a drive and or a big play to get in the end zone. Well, the Vikings may need to utilize their passing attack. They've got some good running backs coming out of the backfield. Griffin Garcia, right side, will take it out between the numbers. And he'll pick up four. Griffin picks up four. Uh, Garcia picks up. Uh, and they'll spot it. Right and that was an That's excellent tackle by the by the safety, uh, Gabe Dagnino. Hey, John, the other thing that this uh, field reminds me of is uh, when uh, Anthony Eiton and Javier Ramos played together. Okay, to Anthony Eiton team was team an team excellent team quarterback team for team the Hopeville Vikings the in the late 90s, uh, and, uh, Ramos, 90s and Javier Ramos, early 90s, and Javier Ramos, who now coaches at Imperial High School Baseball, he was an excellent receiver. Both of them I used to love when I was a kid watching him play. Well, the Javier Ramos is a principal at one of the Imperial schools. I remember when I was AD, I was, uh, he was one of the fellow ADs from Hopeville, and he played baseball at San Diego State, yeah, uh, just a top athlete all the way around. Uh, Steve Evangelist used to kid him and call him GQ. <laughs> I guess a great he, guy, great yeah, coach yeah. too. Good guy all the way around. He's a principal of the elementary school now in Imperial and coaching baseball, as you said. And I believe I was a sophomore and Anthony, Anthony Eiton uh, was a senior and I used to love watching the way he threw the ball, played right. baseball with him. Actually, I was a junior, he was a senior. I played baseball together. And Babe Ruth. Well, Anthony Eiton has family ties to Calexico with his late father, Larry Eiton, from 1968. Awesome. Vic would know all that information uh, as he played ball with them uh, back in the 60s. Him and Ray Alvarado. Uh, Griffin Garcia with a carry picks up four, maybe three. And so Anthony Eiton, uh, I remember playing like in the, in the 90s. He had another mm -hmm. brother that also played, I believe, younger than him. And we recently had a, a running back for Hopeville, uh, Paul Lighton, a couple of years ago, which was an excellent running back here uh, within the last year or two. Yeah. So the Eighton family has produced great athletes that coming out of Hopeville, but originally uh, were down in Calexico. And another uh, uh, coach of mine when I was growing up from Hopeville, George Hoyt. George uh, Hoyt, yeah, now that's a name from the late 60s. An outstanding, he's still, he's, I see him every now and then. Uh, but he was football, basketball, baseball. Griffin Garcia with a quick handoff. Big stop for them. Yeah. With 4.22 to go, third quarter. Couldn't get it happening, and so it looks like the punting unit is coming out of the field. Or they turn it over. They turned it over, yeah, That right? was a fourth, fourth, yeah, they were going for it, John. And they, they've been, that's basically what they've been doing with number 24. Garcia is running him to the right side. And they were able to stop it. Yeah. So the Yellow Jackets will have possession with 422 to go third quarter, up 22 to 0. And it looks like no signs of stopping them. So Rio Albanez. Crow in the backfield. You got to get the ball back. They head on here to the near side. Crow just running over people, picking up six yards. It's a big task to tackle him. Oh yeah, John. and you've got that's why you that's why it's important that the defensive linemen are right there. And they plug in the holes, and then the linebackers have to come in and fill them and, and tackle. Because once he gets past the linemen and through the linebackers. You know, you've got your the, the smaller DBs in the back. And it's, they don't want any piece of them, I <laughs> guarantee you. Second and five, a quick pitch to Marcus Macon. And in there on the stop, number 56. And number 69 um, as well. Uh, number 50, excuse me. Austin, number 50, Ortiz. Ortiz, and there's a penalty flag. And 69 rolled on, so. These two helping out. You know, I'm glad we've got John Seaman mic'd up tonight. Makes a lot of difference. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike, number 69, pushing after the play. 15-yard penalty, added to the end of the run. First down. 
Wow. They got to hold their composure, John, especially when you're down 22 to zero, still in the ball game. It, 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 when you're down three touchdowns, there's still absolutely time for you to come back, especially in the third quarter. Third, I, I've seen, you know, games that are a little further uh, apart and, and teams come back. But once again, you can't make these stupid mistakes or I apologize, those dumb mistakes. Well, they're frustrated, I think, because, you know, they've been holding Palo Verde, as you said, who were averaging over 40 points a game. And they've been, you know, holding their own, but a couple of big plays and, you know, Again, you've, you've got to catch up. So first and 10, Palo Verde at the 38. Rio Albanez to Bejarano, finds room to the outside, breaks a tackle, 30. And brought down by number 29 for the Hauteville Vikings. You got to get a body on that running back, John. You can't tackle with your arms and miss the tackle. It creates a big uh, run for the running back there. And another Johnny. penalty flag. That one weighed about as high as the punt. Daniel Ledesma bringing him down. A lot of action down in the, on their sideline. Dead ball, we have an unsportsmanlike on the bench. That goes on the head coach. That's the first one on the head coach for Palo Verde. 15 yard penalty. Wow. Someone from the sideline caused that penalty. Those so, are just simply unnecessary mistakes, Don. Like three of them in a row, Butch. Trying to, you know, capitalize on the possession and, and, and get it in the end zone and put this game away. Now you're, you're having to move back because of that penalty. So timeout is called, and tonight's game is brought to you by Esked Realty, your hometown real estate office in Calexico, and serving the entire Imperial Valley for 30 years. Go see Mark Esked at Esked Realty at 357. 9707 Esquerre Realty, the mark of excellence. By Top Notch Barbershop, visit Chris at 317 Wake Avenue in El Centro for a one of a kind haircut. Fresh fades, always a cutaway. Top Notch Barbershop. By Arctic Air Conditioning and Heating, we know that having the right people on the job is just as important as choosing the best equipment. Our York trained professionals provide you with top quality equipment, skilled installation, and an expert analysis of your comfort needs. Contact Arctic Air Conditioning and Heating at 352-8855. By Reach Medical Response Service, Donnie Wharton reminds you that when seconds count, you, you can depend on Reach Medical Transportation Service. By Sanders and Incorporated, Jimmy Sanders Architecture and Engineering is a proud supporter of Imperial Valley football, and we wish all our Imperial Valley schools a safe like a and successful right? season. And by Grasso's Italian Food, a family, a valley tradition since 1955, family owned and operated. Grasso's is open Wednesday through Sunday at 5 p.m. Orders to go or come in for that Italian dining experience. And by Imperial Printers, we're ready to help you with your next project from business cards to yard signs. Imperial Printers, what can we print for you today? Probably a score update, still tied seven to seven, Imperial. And so Paulo Verde with a first and 10 back at the 43. Bejarano trying to go to the outside. Number five, Excellent Bejarano tackle there by Griffin Garcia. Uh, that's exactly what you need to do as a linebacker and prevent those big plays. He was able to make an unassisted tackle one-on-one, -on -one, able to bring him down uh, for a gain of about three. So a second and seven for the Vikings inside the 40. I with hope there, I two hope and a half there, minutes to go. go I ahead. hope during this timeout, coaches were able to calm them down, and, and it's kind of been iffy the last couple of minutes with those penalties. Great opportunity for coaches to bring bring down the energy and play smart and and, and under control right. and, and prevent those big uh, mistakes. Yeah, like you mentioned, unnecessary. Making. We'll take the ball, shifty all the way around, 20, and knocked out of bounds. Another penalty flag, Butch, as Marcus Macon 
was taking it to about the 10. You just hit it on the head, very shifty. <laughs> was able to move laterally. That's what you want on a running back, not only to run downhill, but also make somebody miss by their, using their, their, their shift, their, their, their you know, lateral movement, and then explode upfield. Good run by Macon. Yeah. Personal foul, face mask, number 10 on home bill at half the distance to the goal line, first down. So that gives an opportunity for Paula Verde to take it into the end zone as they're getting really close now at the five yard line going in. And there goes Crow. Downhill. Touchdown, Paula Verde with, from five yards out, big Jonathan Crow takes it to the house. That defense, uh, it's a big task when you're having to stay on the field for that long of a time. Uh, credit to Paula Verde putting on a great, excellent drive, uh, a couple big runs. Uh, defense, you, you got them on the ropes. They're a little tired. Uh, they're moving back a little bit, so Good, good offensive play call by the Palo Verde Jackets there. And Joshua Perez will try for the point after with a minute 51 to go third quarter. It is low, but it's good. So 29-0, we'll be back with more in a minute on the Valley Sports Network. Back, ladies and gentlemen, a minute 51 to go third quarter with Palo Verde Yellow, Jackets up 29 to zero. A couple of, not a couple, maybe more than about three or four personal fouls, penalties that allowed Palo Verde to take it into the end zone. Yeah, those big 15-yard uh, penalties are, are uh, unnecessary, like I mentioned earlier, but uh, they just got to keep their cool, play smart, and, and not give up here. Fernandez with a pooch. And we'll be down there by number 11 for, that's a Jaden Castro. Number 11, Jaden Castro. Oh, we'll see now what Holfield decides with uh, doing, uh, doing with the offense. Uh, they, you know, pretty much been running to the right side all night long. Uh, they need to just figure out how to be creative and, and, and move the ball and uh, hopefully pass the ball a little bit more or counter with the other running backs that they have. Halftime in Calipat. Scott's 26, the Hornets zero. And uh, no score update yet from Calexico and Southwest. It's tied at seven for Brawley at Imperial tonight. So first and 10. At the 33 for the Vikings. Counter looked like a trap. The number five, Marini. That was a good call there. You know, everybody thought they were going to 24, which they've been going to all night long. They did just counter it uh, with Marini. So he'll pick up four, maybe five, and they'll spot it right at the 38 yard line. They need a big, Hopeville needs a big touchdown here, John to get back in the ball game and get some momentum, get some confidence. Uh, they, they need to somehow find a way to get in the end zone. They, they've been playing on this side of the field all night long. They need to figure out and put pressure on Palo Verde and get to their side of the field. Well, you've got an outstanding defense on the Yellow Jacket side. Garcia will try to turn it up and does so with a three yard gain. Number 24. Garcia Griffin Garcia. Right Number 11, Ty Phillips. And the Yellow Jackets in on the tackle. 
Number 11, Ty Phipps with the tackle there. Third and short for the Vikings with uh, 35 seconds left in this third quarter. And trying on that sneak, a rugby scrum, but a first down. Looks like Buscaglia with the keeper. Yeah, gets a first down. That's the second time they're running. It's been successful. They got a great push from the offensive lineman there. So kudos to them. We may not get a playoff here uh, as the seconds are counting down in the third quarter. And at the end of the third quarter, 29-0, Palo Verde. We'll be back with more in a minute on the Valley Sports Network. Cada día, el Distrito de Irrigación de Imperial, su entidad pública, ha proporcionado servicio de energía confiable y económico a sus clientes en los valles de Imperial y Coachella. Comparado con otros proveedores de energía, los clientes residenciales, comerciales y gubernamentales del IIT ahorran hasta un 50% en sus facturas. Es porque el IIT está comprometido a más que solo proporcionar energía. El IIT está comprometido con usted. IIT, donde los clientes siempre son primero. Make COVID-19 boosters part of your summer plans. Children five years of age and older are now eligible for a COVID-19 Pfizer booster. The vaccine is safe, free, and effective. Visit myturn.ca.gov or call 442-265-6700 to schedule your child's appointment or find a clinic near you. Have a safe summer. Get boosted. Visit myturn.ca.gov or call 442-265-6700. At Burgers. We're back live here starting the fourth quarter of play from the Chocolate Mountains to the Sea of Cortez. All along the border on a Friday night, Holdfield, Palo Verde. Lee, Desert League matchup, Division 4. And Holdfield has the football at their own 44-yard line. First and 10 with Bryce Buscagli under center. Duarte. We'll try to turn it up the field. And on the that, tackle, that was Bejarano. So, but that was Marini. I'm sorry. Number, number five. five. And it was tackled by number five, Bejarano. Okay. So Javier Bejarano playing on both sides of the ball. As is other players for the Palo Verde Yellow Jackets. Crow has his defensive end position. And you can, he's, he stands out among everybody there. <laughs> and that's Marini trying to take it up with that extra effort. You'll get five yards five. and take it to midfield. Marini on the carry again. Extra effort there from the ball carrier and the line. Number 64, Colt Richie. I think number, number seven uh, there, their quarterback. Was in the tackle. And number three. So a five yard gain or six yard gain by Austin Marini. It'll bring up a third and short, about four yards. As we start the fourth quarter of play here. Griffin Garcia, but whistles blow the play dead. There's a flag on the field. That'll be a first down for the Vikings, and now they're in Palo Verde territory. So the Vikings taking advantage of that penalty and getting a first down. See if they keep this drive going, John. Hopefully get it in the end zone. Rice Buscaglia. Dropping back. And is it intercepted by Bejarano? That was an excellent play. One-handed diving catch by Bejarano. Great interception. That ball should have been thrown away. 
Uh, fortunately, he had uh, pressure right in his face and threw it. And uh, when you're throwing off balance, rolling to, once again, your left side, you really got to make sure you're set and, and use, uh, you know, uh, use your balance to throw the football, not falling away. It's going to float in the air when that happens. And then he threw it in the traffic, mm -hmm. which so. doesn't help. So a turnover, and Palo Verde has the football now at their own 38-yard line with 10 minutes to go in this football game. First and 10, Crow in the backfield, Rio Albanez under center. Rolling out, he's looking to throw, scrambling. Breaks a couple of tackles, the face penalty mask. flags, and he'll gain about six yards. I'm surprised well, they threw, they were gonna throw the ball there. Mixed it up a little bit. Yeah, well, you know, they gotta showcase Albania somehow. He's just handing off the ball back and forth. I mean, even though it's, it's complex down there, but I'd like to see him air it out, you know? I, I wouldn't want to be a quarterback for that offense, John, <laughs> just handing the ball off. <laughs> Give me in the action, throw the ball, let me run the ball. Right. But hey, hey, that's that's their style. That's their unique. They're unique, and they've been successful with it. You're absolutely right, Butch. I mean, when you played, you were able to run the option, and yet you had receivers to throw to. So you kind of mix it up. As a quarterback, you're asked to be a leader, John, and whatever it takes for your team to be successful, and they've had good success so far in the year so it doesn't matter if you throw or, or, or you or you don't it's about winning it's about competing and, and getting your team to the next level and using your personnel to the best possible system that you have absolutely john so a first and 10 at the 49 marcus macon good grabs stop. about three yards good Number stop two. by the uh, defensive front there so a gain of two for the Yellow Jackets. They'll spot the ball in Hauteville territory at the 49. And on the tackle there, number 10 again, Fermin Velarde. He's been uh, excellent tonight. Uh, I like uh, the way he plays with that grit there. And he's got some stats there to prove it. So second and eight for the Yellow Jackets. The big man, Jonathan Crow, grabbing at least 12, 13 yards, taking it inside the 40 for a first and 10. And having a tough time getting up is a Oakville player. John, uh, Crow is running downhill like a freight train coming at you. Yeah. Having to stop him is, is, like I mentioned, not an easy task, especially when you're about 5'9", five, 5'8", five, uh, going up against somebody who's 6'1", about 240 pounds. <laughs> you got it. The, the laws of physics. Jesus. When it comes to health care, Intercare is here to help with locations throughout the Imperial Valley. Formerly Clinicas de Salud del Pueblo, Intercare, improving the health and wellness of the community. By the Town Pump Steakhouse, open Tuesday through Saturday. Call for reservations at 344-3663 in Westmoreland. The Town Pump serves up the delicious and savory steak and lobster dinner. Combine experience of Valley tradition for 50 years. By Marianne Valenzuela Fenley, your State Farm Insurance agent in the Imperial Valley. And like a good neighbor, she is located at 528 G Street in Brawley. Call her at 344-0447 for all your insurance needs by Ray Castillo, Supervisor, District 5. Ray Castillo is a proud sponsor of VSN and he would like to thank his constituents of District 5 and reminds everyone to get involved in their community. For your custom Letterman jacket needs, serving Yuma and Imperial Valley, it's Letterman and Bros. Call Dan at 693-5034. The right choice for your Letterman jacket. And who, that Hauteville player, Getting up, we'll need to sit, sit out a couple of plays. That's number 29. That's Daniel Ledesma. Daniel Ledesma, we've called his name out several times tonight. Got shaken up, but he looks like he's walking off on his own accord. 
Hey, John, right now, like I mentioned, Hopeville needs to end it on a positive note, okay? They're down 29 with eight minutes. Got to figure out a way how to create something, a turnover, stop, uh, and, and get the ball moving, hopefully ending up with the score on a positive note. They got to figure that out. Rio Albanez dropping back, airing it out. Intercepted by number four for the Hopeville Vikings, Chad Goodsell. It, it was a, a you know a, a positive turnover, but a mental mistake by the defense when you're hitting a quarterback late, uh, unnecessary roughness or late hit. Uh, so they're going to move it back. And that nullifies the turnover, right? Yes. Yes, First down nullifying the turnover, with giving Paul Verde excellent field position when they could have had the ball back on an interception. So at first and 10, Paul Verde moving up to the Hauteville 28 yard line. Hauteville's just got to keep on fighting, John. They got to make a big stop and not give up here. Still got time, eight minutes to create a turnover again, just like they did, and get the ball for 23 Hopeful. with a little reverse play from Macon to Bejarano. We'll take it to the 20-yard line, a pickup of four. Good stop by the defense there. So eight minutes to go in this football game, and it's all Paulo Verde. They're hey, up 29-0. John, Hopeville's uh, fairly young. They, they got 23 returners next year and eight kids on this varsity are sophomores. Wow. So their JV, I saw them earlier play. They weren't bad either, so they're fairly young. Hopefully they could uh, be more uh, successful they, next year. They lost a lot of seniors from last year. And there's Crow stumbles and falls but nonetheless picks up three. It'll be third and short. The ball at the 16 yard line. So you want to stay tuned for the Burgers and beer and the El Centro PD players of the game tonight here in Hopeville and Palo Verde. Crow will pound his way. And does he get a first down? 22, the ball carrier again. Crow tackled by number 69, Rodan. So Crow will get the first down. He's been a workhorse tonight, Yeah, John. he has. He's been running hard downhill and uh, hard to stop when he's that big and and and, and runs hard. He's a compliment to Bejarano and to Marcus Macon. When you need that tough one yard, he, he'll, he'll go get it. <laughs> he sure will, and he's done it tonight. First and 10. In the red zone, the Yellow Jackets. Bejarano with the ball. Nice move. Just Shifting his way up the middle uh, on the on the outside, and will take it inside the five. First and goal. Paulo Verde penalty flag late there. But Bejarano took it to the outside. Number 42, George Moreno with the tackle is a sophomore kid. A little shaken up after that tackle. So it's going against the Yellow Jackets. Another unsportsmanlike conduct against Palo Verde. But it's a first and goal. And they'll keep walking it off at the 7 to 18 yard line. That's a huge penalty for yeah. them getting the ball at the two yard line ready to punch it in. Now they're at the 
18. 18. And what would you do? I, I, I'd look for Crow again. Well, you got a first down, John. You got, you got several plays to get in the end zone. So they may go to Bejarano as he's in motion. Takes it across the 15. Marini, I right know, not number nine, my, my apologies. Andre Estrada with the tackle there. Good wrap, brought him down. So we'll see how uh, Hopeville, how, how tough they are here on the defensive side, John. This is a big, uh, a big challenge for them right now to make a big stop with the second down and goal here. Bejarano, this time, taking it up the middle. A little pounding going on. That was a hard run by Bejarano, who's not that big and uh, had a run in between the tackles there for a hard, uh, what, five, six yards there? Now take it to the seven yard line now for a third and goal for the Yellow Jackets with 4.38 to go in this football game. Hey, John, perfect opportunity right now for a play action pass into the touchdown. They're expecting to run, that's what they've been doing. You do a play action, get your quarterback outside the pocket and just toss into the end zone. Do they still run a bootleg? I mean, but, there's nobody yeah. on, the, on, the, on, the, on the white side of the field. Bejarano, and right there going in for a touchdown. Javier Bejarano for the Yellow Jackets from seven yards out. Takes the quick pitch from Rio Albanez. When you have an offensive line, John, that just pushes the defensive line back and creates those holes, there's no need for them to throw the ball. Yeah. Right? <laughs> just run it down. Yeah, and that's what that's what Paul Alberti's done all night. A couple of bad things happened when he threw the ball, though. It's just so difficult for Because the he hasn't been able to do that the whole the, game. Just stopping that run, coming downhill, run after run after play after play, it's, it's, a, it's a big challenge for the defense to do. Perez with a point after fakes it or couldn't get the ball on the tee correctly. Or mishandled by the, by by the, the, by the setter. So 35-0 in the fourth quarter. And we'll be back with more in a minute on the Valley Sports Network. At Burgers and Beer, our customers are like family. Let's hear what a few of them have to say about us. We're here at Burgers and Beer with the best burgers in town. We get to sit together and enjoy the great food. I like when Burgers and Beer is in the lemonade. For the fresh iced tea, whether it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner. This is wonderful, very fast, very efficient. I love the great food and family environment. I love the burgers and the customer service. So come and see us and find out for yourself at Burgers and Beer. Hey, hey, John, we talked about last week going into a game where it's a little bit out of hand already. Now you really start focusing on, on the positive. How do we build for next week? How do we end this so we could roll into next week on a positive note? And, and, and Hopeville needs to somehow find leadership from their own teammates and, and, and have a will to fight back so they could drive the football and, and make big plays and get it in the end zone. That's absolutely right. And so even though they're down 35-0, you know, that's, you know, they can't catch up with four minutes to go. And next week, they're, they're running on, they're going on running clock with four minutes and Hopeville will, will Hopeville plays Vincent Memorial next week, which is another big Desert League game. So they just can't roll down and, 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 and pretend the game's over. They need to fight. That's, that's what football's about. It's, it's about perseverance. How do we get you know, the ball into the end zone with four minutes left? We just gotta be, figure out a way. And you brought that up last week with Calexico and Central. With even though Calexico was down uh, several scores, but they kept fighting and scored two touchdowns toward the end for a 30 to 14 uh, loss. But nonetheless, they kept their 
eye on the prize. Buscagli with a quick pitch. So moving to the outside, and that is number four, Chad Goodsell. And Crow in with the tackle there. With recycling now more important than ever, CRNR Incorporated has developed innovative recycling and reuse programs. CRNR Incorporated, the face of a greener generation. By Heart Insurance Center. For over 70 years, Heart Insurance has provided insurance solutions to the residents of Brawley, El Centro, and the surrounding areas. We have a heart for insurance. Look for a new location on K Street. And Hoville running right up the middle. That's Marini. With Austin Marini, the ball carrier. Picks up a good amount of yards. They were taking it to the 42-yard line. That was a tough little run by, uh, you know, uh, Marini, who's not really big, but he's pretty shifty and, and hits the hole hard. So good job. A pass on the right side of the field. Ooh. Not catchable. They try to sneak him on their sideline, John, and, and uh, Palo Verde was able to pick him up and cover him. But uh, that was something different from Hopeville. Yeah. Uh, the kick could throw it. He's got size, he could throw, uh, and they, I, I think he could be more of a weapon for them, but they, they just decide to run, that's the, ty that's the type of offense they run. And Bentley Rothflesh, the intended receiver, I believe. So it'll bring up a fourth down with a minute and a half to go on a running clock, and this is the last chance for Hopefield to try to get in the end zone. To get that first down, John. They're coming out of the eye. Passing again. Looking deep. A man is open. Number four, good sell. He had him open there for a bit there, just slightly overthrew it. And so Paulo Verde will come up, probably take a knee, and that'll be the end of this football game. John Hoville needs somehow to develop a, a, one of those good running backs like they had a couple years ago. Remember Jose DeVoe? He was an outstanding running back. Uh, they need just one kid that makes a big difference, is able to take it to, to the house anytime he touches the ball. So I hope that next year they have these uh, underclassmen, they find a kid that could run and they could throw. Quarterback's coming back as a junior uh, next year, so he's got some talent. They got a couple of receivers that are underclassmen as well, so we'll see how they fare next year. And the clock ticks. Even though time has not expired, we've got Hoadville with 35, and I'm sorry, with Paul Verde with 35, Hoadville with zero, and we'll be back with more in a minute on the Valley Sports Network. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back here. The end of the Hauteville Palo Verde game, Desert League matchup with a dominating Palo Verde team scoring 35 points against Hauteville, scoring none. And so got Butch Tony Morales here, who's going to give us a little analysis of the final two quarters of play tonight. Well, I mean, John, uh, Palo Verde did what they they generally do is run the ball, pound the ball with Bejarano and uh, and Macon and also Crow. They did an outstanding job uh, running the ball. That's exactly what they're designed to do. Hopeville on the other side, it, it's 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 a hard matchup for them to stop those three guys, especially you got two guys that run over a thousand yards 
uh, so far this year. It's a big challenge, but they were flat. They weren't able to move the ball on the offense. They, they made a couple of big penalties, but they, they weren't able to get the ball going, and, and, and they didn't score any points. So uh, hopefully they, they, they go and watch film and, and, and fix what they need to fix so they could compete next week because they got a tough challenge against Vincent Memorial who's going to air it out and they, they're going to have to rely on their defensive coverages to stop them. So all in all, uh, Paulo Verde did, like I mentioned, an outstanding job. Uh, Hopeville, they need to fix and, and, and get more, uh, i say, rhythm on the offensive side. Well, you look at Ho Hopeville in the Division Four ranks, uh, you know, they're, they're down at the 13th position and then you've got Palo Verde up in the second position of the Division Four, so that that speaks a lot about what the what the Palo Verde Ye Yellow Jackets are have been able to do in the season thus far. Let's talk about the players of the game. Burgers and Beer sponsors a player of the game, and so does the El Centro PD. In your opinion, what did you think of the running of Jonathan Crow? He went downhill, ran hard, and when they needed a couple of yards, he was able to get it. Uh, extremely hard runner and hard to bring down and uh, you could see his size he's a man a man amongst boys out there uh, I like the way he ran and uh, I, I, we're gonna give him the offensive player of the game on the defensive side we got Bejarano who was involved in multiple tackles and also a huge interception one-hander uh, caught it with one hand, diving catch, excellent play. Uh, and we have to give it to him how he played on the defensive side, John. Well, the, you heard it. The players of the game tonight uh, are from the Palo Verde Yellow Jackets with Jonathan Crow and Javier Bejarano. We'd like to thank all our listeners tonight. Um, and a thank you, a big thank you to Butch Morales, who graced our airwaves again for the uh, ill Victor Carrillo who hopefully may be back uh, next week against Brawley in the Brawley Calexico game. But Butch, you're more than welcome to come back anytime. Thank you for having me. It, it, it was, a, like I mentioned, a, a great opportunity, great experience, and uh, I wish uh, Vic well, and I, I hope to see him uh, back next week. And I'd like to thank our technician in the booth, Jose Alejos, uh, doing an outstanding job. Without him, we couldn't even get on the air. And again to our cameraman, par excelente, Luis Panchito Garcia, the Big 805, and our, uh, and of course all our, our 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 sponsors that make the broadcast possible, Arctic Air, with Cesar Rodriguez in Prill Valley College, the El Centro Police Department, the Dom Team, Ojeda Industries, Havens Landscaping, Intercare, Esqued Realty, Burgers and Beer. CRNR Incorporated, Ivy Welding and Mechanical, Jesus Cachua Escobar, Ray Castillo, Supervisor District 5, Marianne Valenzuela, Fanley State Farm Insurance, Sanders Architecture and Engineering, Reach Medical Response Service, Grosso's, the IID, Letterman and Bros, the Town Pump, Ojeda Industries, Top Notch, Driscoll's, um, and many more that make our broadcast possible. Join us next week from the Chocolate Mountains to the Sea of Cortez all along the board on a Friday night when the Valley Sports Network will go to Calexico and call the Calexico Brawley game. Um, and then Will Torres and Ron Rubio will be at Central and Imperial for more exciting Imperial Valley football. For Victor Carrillo and Butch Morales, this is John Moreno of Bulldog Media bringing you live coverage of Imperial Valley football on the Valley Sports Network saying good night and enjoy your weekend.